everyone, and welcome to the LCBTQ Virtual College Fair, sponsored by the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counselors, empowered by StrideScan. Each school attendance today has taken an active step in building their LGBTQ plus community. By participating in this fair, they have acknowledged 14 LGBTQ plus students in their greater community. Additionally, we have utilized the Campus Pride Index to showcase an objective rating as to where the policies of each institution fall in terms of LGBTQ plus friendliness. If the school participating today has a Campus Pride Index score, you can find the score listed next to their name at strikescan.com slash LGBTQ. The Pride Index is always a good place to start with your search, but it should not be the only place you look. Now, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A button located at the bottom of the screen, which you can use to ask questions during the session at any time. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is also just one of many sessions happening today. There is an additional hour after this, and we encourage you to sign up for more. And the presentation is also being recorded, and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. Now, without further ado, I'll turn it over to our first college, which is Pennsylvania College of Technology. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, for attending tonight. My name is Bryce Winder, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Pennsylvania College of Technology. Uh, so before I dive into the content of the presentation, I just wanted to show everyone a quick video because I think it really does a good job of showing what we do here at the college. So I'll show that video and then we'll dive into the content of the presentation a little bit. Any college can make you look good on paper. At Penn College, we're more into looking good on steel and looking good on x-rays with looking good in code with extra miles taken on airstrips and suspension bridges, building and rebuilding, vision and revisions with perfect stitches and smiles, with making something that already looks good look even better. We look amazing on a plane, even if it's only for a minute. And when it's time to rest, we'll build a robot who can look good for us. And when it's all said and done and made and seen, you'll look good to everyone. Because the past might be written on paper, but the future will be made by hand. So Pennsylvania College of Technology is the national leader in hands-on applied technology education. And we are located in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, which is some of the, the Little League World Series, which is only a couple hours away um, from folks in New Jersey. So here at Penn College, like we like to call it, we have over 100 different diverse majors here, which I'll get into here in a couple of slides. But something that we're really proud of is that we have a 98% graduate graduate placement rate, which is outstanding. Um, so like I said, we are hands-on college. So we do a lot of this education through our 150 plus learning labs here at the college. And then we do have an average class size of about 16 students. So oh, our 100 majors, they're split into three different academic schools. So we have the College of Business Arts and Sciences. Uh, so some of the programs you'll find in there are baking, culinary, uh, graphic design, human services and restorative justice, just to name a few. Next, we have our College of Engineering Technology. So this college has over 65 different programs located in it, and that ranges anywhere from architecture to automotive to construction to aviation, just to name a few for you. And then finally, we have our College of Nursing and Health Sciences. So uh, in this academic school, you can find all of our nursing programs, our dental hygiene program, our physician assistant uh, program, just to name a few for you. And like I said, we have over 100 majors here. So certainly, you know, if there wasn't something that I listed, check out our program finder online to see if we do have a program that you'd be interested in. So student life here in Williamsport, we do have a full-fledged college campus with, uh, you know, campus housing, dining, um, clubs and activities, uh, division three sports. So uh, you name it, our students are really involved in campus and we love to see that uh, because it, it only makes their time better here at the college. If you're unfamiliar with our area, like I said, we are home to the Little League World Series, which you can see in the one picture there. Um, but what else is there to do in the area? Well, we have the Community Arts Center that's located right downtown, a couple blocks away from campus. 
they'll have different uh, artists, musicians will come, little Broadway shows come there, which is pretty cool for students. Um, we also have a ton of local nature spots, as well as some really nice shopping areas and local restaurants. And my favorite thing about the area is that we're only a couple hours away from major metropolitan areas, which is great for visiting, but it's also great when you're looking for a job. So we're really only a couple hours away from New York City, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, uh, Baltimore, Washington, DC, just to name a few. So we do a lot of LGBTQ representation here at Penn College. So just uh, some of the things that we do here at the school, you get your preferred name from day one that is really big in our, our admissions office as well as our entire enrollment management team. Uh, we also have a club called PC Alliance uh, for our LGBTQ plus uh, students. Uh, we also have our annual Pride Week and uh, just starting in this fall 2021 semester, we're gonna have gender inclusive housing options as well as LGBTQ housing community. Um, and in, in addition to that, you know, we also have our counseling services available uh, to students as well as our employees get safe zone training every year as well. And one of the students I, I really wanted to highlight, uh, their name is Kaylin Marshall. Kaylin is a junior from Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Uh, they are in our Human Services and Restorative Justice Program, and they are also part of the Student Government Association. Uh, they're a senator there, and they're also vice president of PC Alliance. And I just love their quote here that they love it at Penn College, the relationships, the connections they've been uh, able to build. It's helping them graduate and, and really become a better person. And they said the most important thing they've learned while being a student in the LGBTQ plus community here is that they can be their authentic self. And that is really something that we love to hear our students talk about. So if you're interested, we do have a very simple three-step admissions process. We are open enrolling admissions. So if you're still interested for this fall, uh, you can apply. If you're interested in future semesters, our application for fall 2022 will open up in August. So you got some time for that. So you can just complete the application, submit your materials, and then meet the placement requirements. Uh, and lastly, we do have some visit opportunities as well. We're very fortunate to have very low case numbers here. Uh, in Williamsport and on campus. So we do have our self-scheduled personal tours, uh, as well as we have Saturday tours that will be starting here in late April. So you can check that out all on the pct.edu slash visit website. Um, and there you go. I gave you back a couple of seconds. Thank you so much for giving us that presentation. Up next, we have Northland College. Awesome. All right. Well, hello, friends. Thank you so much for letting me be here and to present with you um, tonight. My name is Alex. I am uh, one of the associate directors of admissions for Northland College, as well as a class of 2016 alum of the school. And I'm really excited to be particularly presenting at this panel here tonight. Now, to get us started, one of the most important things that you need to know about Northland is where we're located. So we are up in Northern Wisconsin, right on the South shores of Lake Superior. So we're less than a mile from the largest body of freshwater in the world. And that's something that's integrated throughout everything we do. Um, whether that's camping, getting outside and just exploring the lake walks, um, wildlife, so on and so forth, you're gonna find that every day, something that you do is gonna be tied to that lake and that community around the water. Now, Northland, we're a pretty unique school. Uh, we have just over 600 students total at our college, so definitely on the smaller side. Um, but we have a lot of great perspectives in terms of the mission and vision and the things that we're dedicated to. Now, Northland, we are one of the nation's leading environmental colleges with a dedication to sustainability and social justice. We're an Eco-League member, which is one of six colleges across the country that are um, known for our small, sustainable, and social justice components that you can go and study abroad at. We've completely divested from fossil fuels. We're one of Sierra Magazine's cool schools, a member of the Real Foods Challenge, as well as Wisconsin's first bee campus, which is something that I particularly love as well. So you see gardens with pollinators throughout our entire campus. Now we have over 40 different academic programs. So again, even though we have a smaller, you know, close-knit community in terms of our student size, there's a lot of different things that you have access to. And every single one of these programs is gonna have components of environmentalism, sustainability, as well as social justice brought throughout your entire four years at the college. 
So whether you're studying something like business, sustainable community development, sociology and social justice, you're still gonna to learn topics related to environmentalism. You're gonna to learn topics relating to the indigenous cultures of the region. You're gonna learn things about marketing and so on and so forth. And you're gonna be tasked with thinking critically about the problems facing every single one of those fields as well. So again, something pretty special and unique um, with our school and the way that we connect to our mission and vision as a college. Now we are division three for athletics. So if we have any student athletes, we do have you covered there as well. Um, about 38% of our student body right now are student athletes. And you can see that we have um, various opportunities for students interested in that type of opportunity, whether that's um, basketball or hockey, soccer, lacrosse, so on and so forth. Again, that's something that's gonna be fun, not only as a student athlete, but if you're bored on that um, Saturday night, you can always go down and um, participate and kind of be in the audience supporting your fellow student athletes as well. Now, I think it's important, obviously we're all here to talk about the LGBTQ um, plus community. And there's a lot of different things that Northland has done to make sure that all of our students feel supported and included, um, whether that's all gender restrooms in every single building on campus, we have a rainbow dinner every winter, which is a safe space where everybody can come and dine and be social together. Our alliance, um, we have a stone that's been outside of our oldest building for 130 years, and it's painted with the rainbow pride flag. We have a pride night with athletics, which talks about issues related to um, athletes and the LGBTQ plus community, our drag shows and our diversity and inclusion center, which regularly hosts events, outreach, and brings in guest speakers around um, topics that are important to the LGBTQ community, as well as educating others about the issues and real life challenges that many of us are facing. Now, our application is free. We don't require letters of recommendation. We don't require essays. We would just ask for a copy of your high school transcripts. Now, again, we recognize COVID has presented a lot of challenges. So if you're not able to take the SAT or ACT, that's not a problem, um, but you are welcome to send those scores to us if you'd want. And it would take about two weeks or so for us to review that application um, and get you that admissions decision in addition to the Common App, which we also accept as well. Finally, of course, cost is something that's on the mind of many students. Now our cost of attendance is um, approximately $49,000 per year, but nobody pays that. Every student's guaranteed at least $19,000 for their academics in addition to other scholarships with a goal of us getting to know each of you individually throughout that process. And then of course, everybody um, that can um, is welcome to file the FAFSA for their free student financial aid. Um, finally here, you can see my contact information listed. You can always reach out to me, ask questions about our community and what it's like living in Ashland, um, as well as at Northland and what our school is about with that mission and vision and location. Otherwise, I appreciate you all letting me be here tonight and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the presentation. Thank you so much for your presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of the institutions you're seeing today, definitely go ahead and take and drop those in the chat below. Up next, we have University of California, Irvine. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is Andrea, I use she and her pronouns. UCI is part of the University of California system, which is a phenomenal top research university um, in California. We are in a beautiful location, halfway between LA and San Diego, about 10 minutes from the beach. We're also a top 10 public university according to US News. So we have a lot going for us in terms of our location um, and our uh, setting and our academics. Uh, but I did want to talk to you today about what kind of environment you can expect to find at UCI and if it's going to be a welcoming one for you, because that's really important. Uh, we want to make sure that you find a welcoming home to go to college. So UCI is pretty well known in uh, the country for our diversity in terms of our uh, racial et ethnic diversity, but we think that it's important to address both racial and ethnic diversity, uh, but also the intersectionality of that uh, with all other identities. So we do our best to support students who identify in a variety of ways on our campus um, through graduation to help them graduate and then go on to jobs as well. So what does that look like? A little more specifically, our uh, gender inclusive and LGBT plus support on our campus um, is going to be coming from the top down 
and the bottom up, which is great about being in California and having supportive uh, state policies, uh, but also being on a campus that recognizes that this is a big part of who our students um, choose to identify as, and that we want to make sure that you're feeling welcome no matter where you're at on campus. So some of the things we do at UCI to address that, uh, you will find that our faculty, staff, and students regularly use their pronouns in their introductions, uh, so it is not atypical to hear or see that. We have gender inclusive bathrooms across campus. We have uh, software in terms of any sort of enrollment or registration or anything on campus uh, that does address non-binary options for um, when you are filling out forms. Um, we also have housing on our campus. We have an open house in our first year. So for our, our freshman students, uh, we have open house. This is uh, gender inclusive. So you can identify in any way and live in this housing. We do expect students to uh, go through some um, ally training though, especially if they don't necessarily identify um, outside of a gender norm. Then for our second, third, and fourth year students, we have Spectrum House. So these are great housing options where students can find a community that is supportive. We also have a lot of academics that support um, that the gender queer and queer studies, gender and sexuality studies. So these are academic ways that you can get supported, but you can get support outside of those specific academics as well. Something else that we offer on our campus is in addition to the LGBT Resource Center, which I'll talk about in just a few moments, we also have liaison staff that are dedicated in the Counseling Center, in the Career Center, and in our Student Health Center as well. So not just staff in a specific office, but staff across campus that are identified um, to be a safe space for you to go and get help when you need it. And being in Southern California, there are lots of off-campus opportunities as well to enjoy. A little more about our campus. It's a very friendly place. It's a collaborative place. I think our layout helps to foster that environment. We're built in a perfect one mile circle to all of our academic buildings. Freshman housing is right on the map here. Uh, Middle Earth housing, which is on the left hand side, is a nod to the Lord of the Rings fandom. And then down at the bottom, you see two little blue circle arrow things. That's where Mesa Court is. That's our other freshman hall. So uh, all of our academics plus our freshman hall are on this circle. To get from one side of the circle to the other is about a 20 minute walk by walking through that beautiful park in the middle over 11,000 trees. So it's a really great uh, place right in the center of campus. We're a large school, so you'll find a, a very um, huge student body, but because of the layout of our campus, it doesn't necessarily feel that big when you're on campus. For majors, things we're probably best known for are things in pre-med, pre-health, biology. We also have really strong majors in computer science and engineering. We also have a top five criminology major in the US, a top 10 dance major in the US, uh, lots of policy majors, uh, 14 different languages that we offer, a great business school, one of only three in the UC system for undergraduate students as well. So we offer quite a bit um, to, for students to choose from. But a third of our students come in as undeclared. So if you're not quite sure where you fit yet, our advisors are happy to help foster you through this process. Something nice about our location as well is the city of Irvine has one third of all Fortune 500 companies right in our backyard. So we really encourage students to find internships, field work, um, or to do undergraduate research as well. These are going to, some of these will be incorporated right into your major. Um, and even if they aren't, they're very um, uh, available. And we let you know about these opportunities when you're on our campus. We also have really great study abroad and UCDC. Um, so this is studying in a different country on pause right now for COVID um, or studying here in Washington, DC. The University of California system owns a building in Washington, DC. 150 students live there every semester. Great way to network. Students do an internship while they're there, typically on Capitol Hill, but you can also do it with the Smithsonian or the FBI or anybody else in the uh, DC area. So some really great ways to build your resume while you're at UCI. We are also the anteaters. We're the only anteaters in the country. So it's a really fun mascot and has a lot to do with our school spirit. Our school spirit isn't just sports though. It goes way beyond that. Uh, we have one of the top esports programs in the country. We're really well regarded for our club sports. We also have a lot of residence life. Uh, our LGBT Center has weekly events. You can see just a sample of that here. Uh, we also have three full-time staff and additional staff on campus to support you, because that's really important. Uh, right before I close, just our application is a little earlier than most schools. Um, you, it is due in November of your senior year. 
and we don't do early action or early decision, and we will not be using the SAT or ACT this coming year. If you have further questions, I'm here. I'll drop this link in the chat, um, and thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have Renato Colley, Stephanie. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for, for being here. We are so happy to be here. Uh, my name is Jose Vallejo. I am an admissions counselor here at Ramapo College of New Jersey. Uh, a little bit about our institution. We are, uh, we are uh, the smallest four-year public college in New Jersey. We're really proud of this because our size allows us to really provide an environment for students to be recognized uh, and be part of our community. Uh, you know, right now we have, uh, we're about 30 miles away from New York City, so we're perfectly located, um, you know, with transportation easily uh, from campus to New York City's Times Square. So a lot of our students are taking advantage of this to do internships, to go to concerts, sporting events, uh, pride festivals throughout the city. So we have a ton of ways for students to really kind of make the region part of their, uh, if you will, educational lab. Um, our faculty are always here to teach and mentor. So a student faculty ratio of 16 to one uh, means that we don't have teaching assistance at all for any of our courses. Uh, and truly the teachers are here, our faculty are really here to mentor students. Uh, time and time again, we hear uh, stories from current students, graduating students that talk about um, the relationship that they've built with their faculty members. Myself as an alum of Ramapo College, I am still in contact with a lot of the faculty members that I worked with as a student. Um, which really kind of speaks to our overall hallmark uh, for our education uh, is that small classroom environment, direct contact with faculty members, and a welcoming uh, community to allow for you to explore not just academically, but also other things that you might be interested in. Uh, Ramapo College is a test optional institution, so we do not require SATs or ACTs for any of our undergraduate majors or our four plus one programs. Uh, we do require them for our joint programs in medicine and law, uh, but also we don't re require them for our scholarship opportunity. So that's a really big plus for Ramapo. Uh, admissions wise, we really wanna make sure that we are looking at all aspects of a student's application and really get to know our students who are applying to the institution. Um, you know, our model really works because our, if you look at our graduation rate or retention rates, they're definitely a lot higher than the national averages. And even if you're looking at our graduation rates, uh, right now we are about 87% of our graduates that are fully employed or attending graduate school within one year of graduating from Ramapo. Um, we do have over 100 majors, minors, and concentrations. Concentrations are basically specializations within a larger program. So if you look at our communication arts program, we have five areas of concentration or specialization within the field of communications, which would be journalism, uh, visual communication design, uh, digital filmmaking, uh, media writing, and um, I'm forgetting what, global communication and media. So each one of them will provide you a foundation in communication, but then really tailor the education in your second, third, and fourth year. Uh, I mentioned our four plus one programs. Uh, we do offer a number of them. These are programs where students can get not only a bachelor's degree, but a master's degree from Ramapo College all in five years full time, um, all of which are listed right here. Lots of our in, uh, of our majors do require students to complete some form of field work or internship before you can graduate, um, particularly in programs in our School of Humanities, uh, as well as in our School of uh, Social Sciences. You're going to see majors that are going to require students to do that. Academically, we also provide a, a diverse uh, array of programs that students can choose, including three majors that you can build yourself. Um, one of which, uh, our social science major, allows for you to tailor your education within the field of social science into a number of different programs, including a, a gender and sexuality studies major. Uh, on uh, minors, we have a bunch of those, including our minor in women and gender studies, as well as uh, minors in languages. Uh, we offer about, I think, uh, seven different languages as minors that you can uh, pursue. Uh, so definitely a lot of great options there for students. Uh, the joint programs that I mentioned earlier that do require standardized test scores are listed right here on the screen. Uh, all of these do have uh, test optional 
options. So if you are looking to go into medicine, but are not going to be doing an SAT or are, are not able to do an SAT, you can definitely major in our biology pre-med track, which is a test optional program and follows the same exact pattern as these that are tied to the different medical schools. Same thing with our law and society and political science program. They also have a pre-law option as well, and that does not require SAT scores. Uh, college, of course, isn't just about the academics. It's a big part of it, but there's also that other part, which is the fun part, right? So uh, like many schools, we do have a study abroad uh, uh, program here at the college. Right now, we have about 500 plus programs and more uh, on six different continents. Our programs can run for as short as a week, like our trips to China and Peru, to uh, up to a full year overseas. So definitely a lot of options available. And these programs run throughout the calendar year. This year with the pandemic, we have put our study abroad programs on hold, but we still do offer internship opportunities in about 45 countries. So some of our students who are doing uh, internships abroad are doing them remotely from home. So they're working with some of the major um, international corporations that we have partnerships with that allows for them to uh, really kind of have that experience. And of course, tons of activities, including our Pride Fest, um, our, lavender, uh, our Lavender graduation ceremonies are also available for students. Uh, Application-wise, our deadlines are listed right here. We do offer scholarship opportunities for uh, incoming students. Uh, there is a deadline for those of December 15th, and you can find all that information on our website. We are also doing on-campus visits and video tours. So if you go to those links right there, and I'll put those on the chat, uh, you'll be able to kind of, uh, if you're in the area, come by for a campus visit. It's a completely outdoor visit, or take, take a look at our video tours. So with that, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for your presentation. As a final reminder to our participants, if you do have questions, definitely don't hesitate to put them in the Q&A down below. Up next, we have the University of Rochester. Hey folks, just one moment. Excellent, hopefully you can see my screen. Um, hi everybody, my name is Erica Padilla. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I want to take a quick second. I, I know we're in the middle of a presentation just to say, I hope everybody's doing well because I know there's a lot happening all around us um, and I'm sending everybody lots of positive energy. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, so to kind of get us started, the University of Rochester is actually located in the city of Rochester on the ancestral lands of the Seneca people. Um, that's roughly about six hours north of New York City, about three hours south of Toronto, Canada, in an area of Western New York that's known as the Finger Lakes region. This is actually a picture of the campus, um, the river campus, known as the river campus because we're on the banks of the Genesee River. Um, and the river campus, I'd like to think of it as the heartbeat of the University of Rochester in large part because it's the home to the College of Art Sciences and Engineering, which is all of our undergraduate programs combined, except for those that are offered by Eastman, which is our School of Music located in downtown Rochester. Um, and the River Campus also houses our graduate schools of engineering, business, education, several of which have partnered with our undergraduate college to offer direct admission uh, for graduate offerings. And then across the street, not in the picture, is actually our medical center, which is connected to our School of Medicine, which is also partnered with the undergraduate college for direct admission to our School of Medicine. Now on the River Campus, we have about 5,500 undergraduate students, um, most of whom live on campus. About 90% of our students live on campus. Um, we're primarily a residential community. And throughout campus, you do find all gender, <clears throat> all gender restrooms. Typically, when we do these visits in person at a college fair, or when I get to meet you hopefully soon in person, uh, one of the first questions I get from students is, how do you describe a Rochester student? The truth is that there is really no one way to describe a Rochester student, and that's because they come from all different walks of life and ethnicities, socioeconomic backgrounds. Officially, the statistic is that 50% of our students, uh, most of our students are coming actually about from 140 countries are represented, about 50 states um, across the United States are represented. About a quarter of our students are identified as first in their families to go to college. Roughly a quarter of our students are international. Um, and so, Celebrating that diversity is a really important part of the, the experience at the university. Um, the hub on campus uh, is actually <clears throat> at the U of R. Our intercultural center is actually the hub that promotes cultural awareness and engagement through, throughout campus. Um, 
at the U of R, we don't actually have a Q Center. Instead, we, we have the Intercultural Center, which is the home of our LGBTQ coordinator and a number of our queer groups, including our Pride Network, our Queer Students of Color group, um, TINT, our Transgender, Intersex, Non-Binary, and Two-Spirit Student Group, um, along, along with several others. And that's because we really want to focus on intersection of intersectionality of all different identities. Um, it's also a safe space for all of our students, no matter how you identify. Um, it's important for our queer students to not only feel supported, but also represented amongst our, our faculty and staff. Our U of R project, our U R out project is a great example of, of that. Um, because it allows our faculty and staff to self-identify as members of the queer community um, and avail themselves to our students. Um, there are a few things that I think are really important to highlight about Rochester and the student experience. One is what I just described in terms of the diversity on campus. The second uh, is that Rochester has an open curriculum. We don't actually have core classes or general education requirements. Rather, students are encouraged to pursue the things that they're passionate about from the moment they arrive on campus. So if you love engineering, if you're curious about business, if you know that you have an interest for anthropology, you have the ability to start those classes the moment you arrive at Rochester. So the goal is to encourage your academic curiosity. If you're someone who doesn't know what you want to study, then it's an open book. You have the ability to really explore across the spectrum. Um, Imagine being in classes with students, all of which have made the very intentional choice to be in that class with you. It creates a very different energy in the classroom. You're not doing this at all alone. Uh, we do have a 10 to 1 student to faculty, uh, faculty ratio. So our faculty are available to you to support you along the way. Um, an interesting fact is that actually Rochester is one of the largest employers in our region. A lot of it is connected to the various institutes that are part of the university and the healthcare network. Um, so that provides students with a lot of access to hands-on opportunities through things like internships and research. Um, because of the open curriculum, there's a lot of interest on the part of the students to double major. Actually, almost half of our students will graduate having pursued two areas of study. The third is that Rochester is a research institution. We're a tier one research university, um, but what's unique is that almost 80% of our undergraduate students will participate in research across all different areas of study, not just in the natural sciences, but also in humanities and the social sciences. Um, our students have the ability to be published through our undergraduate research journal and even pursue their own uh, Rochester innovation grant to fund their own original work. Rochester does um, exercise a holistic review process. Uh, so as part of our review process, we did go test optional last year and remain test optional. On your screen, you'll see all our different application cycles. Um, at the university, we're, com we're committed to meeting full need. And so um, all applicants who are admitted to Rochester will have full demonstrated financial need met. I welcome your questions and I encourage you to visit our virtual events for more information about the university. Thank you. Our final college board admission is Virginia Commonwealth University. Hi, my name is uh, Robert Avison with Virginia Commonwealth University, and let me share my screen right here. So Virginia Commonwealth University, it is a large university located within Richmond, Virginia. Um, uh, Richmond is an awesome place to live. Uh, I'm a little biased. I've lived there my whole life, but we're about two hours away um, from pretty much everything, two hours away from the beach, the mountains, uh, DC, kind of give or take traffic. That's pretty crazy down there. Um, we are very outdoor friendly. We have over 550 acres of James River uh, Park um, system. Uh, Browns Island, Belle Isle are two places that are really within walking distance from campus where there's a lot of festivals, concerts, and then there's also hiking, outdoor activities and nature to explore. Um, we have eight Fortune 500 companies headquartered in Virginia, 11 Fortune 1000 companies, and over 150 different partnerships within the city of Richmond. If you ever uh, are able to travel to Richmond, it is a very small business friendly city. Um, but in terms of campus population, like I mentioned before, we are a large university. We have a little bit over 30,000 students total, a little over uh, 24,000 
of those are going to be our undergraduate population. Um, we also have an 18, um, even though we're a large classroom size or a large campus population, we have an average classroom size of 27 students per campus. Um, we have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And um, so it's still not too overwhelming of a community. However, we do have almost um, 200 thousand alumni. We also have plenty of involvement in resources here on campus, um, including, I believe it's over 400 clubs, organizations, and just kind of departments, including our Office of Multicultural Student Affairs Office, which will showcase the diversity on the community, including um, uh, that within the LGBT Q plus community. Um, there will be hosting trainings, uh, discussions, uh, and also we do provide uh, lavender housing uh, or our lavender house, uh, that is uh, what it is called, um, that is going to be a primarily inclusive environment. It is a living learning community, so you'd be surrounded by students um, in the LGBT Q plus community as well and just kind of a safe affirming environment and I will kind of drop links to all of that information a little bit after this presentation. Um, but in terms of just some things to keep in mind um, in terms of academics, we are we like to say we don't have an average student or a holistic review process. Um, so middle 50% of our students coming in will have around a 339 to a 4.06 GPA. Um, we don't have, we were test optional for this upcoming cycle. We haven't quite confirmed um, what next cycle is going to look like for the fall of 2022, but we will upstate students on that shortly. And if you do choose to turn in your test scores, that middle 50% is around a 1060 to 1250. SAT and about a 22 to 27 ACT. Um, and then in terms of deadlines to just kind of keep in mind, November 1st, if you apply by or before November 1st, that is our scholarship deadline. Um, and you will automatically be eligible for any of the merit-based scholarships that we do have to offer as well as, um, however, if you apply by January 15th, um, we'll we will review your application and get a decision by or before April 1st. Um, that does not mean you have to wait until January, or that does not mean, say, if you're applying in October, that you have to wait until April 1st. Still try to get you those decisions back as soon as possible, um, but it's guaranteed by April 1st if that is the case. Um, also, uh, if you apply afterwards, we are rolling admissions. We will still review, consider your application. Just don't have the guaranteed time frame for when you will get that decision back. Um, so that is uh, kind of a little bit about uh, VCU in general. A couple of other really quick things I do want to mention. Um, the plan coming for next year, uh, starting out now, keep in mind, we are a large university. However, we do ho hope to start in person in the fall uh, next semester. That is, of course, with a lot of safety guidelines. Currently, right now, we are um, going to operate in a hybrid environment. Um, for some of our students where you might be online one week in class the other week or completely online for some classes and then in person for some classes that are in a smaller classroom environment. Um, also, in terms of athletics, we are division one in our sports, including both our men's and women's basketball team that both actually made the tournament this year. So that is something that's super exciting. Um, but yeah, that is actually a little bit about the brief presentation. So I think I might've given you guys some minutes to spare here. Thank you everyone for your presentation. I'm gonna invite all the panelists to come back to answer a question for you guys, just to give you a little bit more insight to their LGBTQ plus friendliness that's offered on their community. So the question we'll be answering is what TV campus events or programs is specific to the LGBTQ plus community at your institution Thanks for the question. I, I really think the, the biggest thing for our students is our PC Alliance Club and organization. I mean, they do a lot of different events and programs throughout the entire year on campus, so it's hard to 
identify one, but I would definitely say our, our PC Alliance uh, student group is, is definitely the coolest thing that our, our students have in the LGBTQ plus community. Northland College? Absolutely, yeah. Our Alliance also does a lot of really cool events. Um, my favorite would be our drag shows, which happen um, two to three times a year. And my favorite is that we have a professor who's in her like late 80s and she is front row at every single drag show for our students. It is the greatest thing in the world. So I'd have to say that's my favorite for sure. University of California, Irvine. I really like just the overall support that our office has. Uh, all, all of our professional staff in the office have weekly office hours that students are able to drop into. Um, but we're also really known for esports. So they, we have a gaming night. Um, so that's kind of fun as well that we do every week. Ramapo College. So at Ramapo, we have a couple of great things. Uh, not only our GSA, which is Ramapo Pride, that uh, leads uh, leads the charge, if we will, for uh, making sure that we are celebrating uh, LGBTQ History Month in October uh, with Pride. Uh, but we also have, uh, through our Women's Center, we do have a Queer Peer Services Coordinator. This is a student position that oversees a lot of policy discussions with the institution to make sure that we are keeping to our mission of being inclusive. Um, and they all take charge of doing events such as Pride Prom, uh, Lavender Graduations, and our Welcome Week events for our LGBTQ students. University of Rochester. There are several things. Um, definitely the Pride Network is huge. A lot of the work that's done by the Intercultural Center that I spoke about, um, and all the variety of groups that are available through um, the Intercultural Center, but then also um, there is a huge pride parade that takes place in the city of Rochester. Rochester has long been um, just recognized as one of the gayest cities um, in the country by the advocate. Um, and getting our students together for the pride parade um, is a huge to do on campus. Um, I'll probably throw in there also our lavender graduation, which is also a huge tradition. And Virginia Commonwealth. Um, yeah, so I did uh, definitely want to highlight the Office of Multicultural Student Affairs. They actually will. Um, they have a queer uh, coffee hour, too, where uh, students can. This past year, it was virtual, but obviously, um, hopefully, that will be more in person, where students can actually come uh, be in a safe space and have open and honest discussions. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We close this window. There will be a link to a very quick four question survey, and we appreciate any feedback you can give us. This is also just one of many sessions happening. We have another session this next hour, so go out there and sign up if you've not already done so. And in about a week, the session supporting will be at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for coming and have a great day.